Welcome to part two of season one, episode 18, Laryngitis. If you do notice, there is a bit of glare on this side of my face because I actually have a window with light coming in from it. I don't know what to do. Um, so it's kind of glaring my face. That's horrible. But um, slightly brighter. So you kind of see me in daylight. Ah! But um, I'm sorry, I took a little break just to check the audio on the other one. The other video has audio. Thumbs up. This better have audio. So once again, part two, season one, episode 18, Laryngitis. Let's continue. I am very disappointed in you guys. You narked on us. Don't get mad at me for exposing your laziness. I'm tired of carrying all of your weight. Read your in a month, guys. I'm just trying to understand what's going on here. Finn, why did you stop singing? Because you started giving all the male weights to Jesse. kind of shook my confidence. Oh, see? He shook his confidence when Jesse got all the male leads. So obviously the next time someone who's a really great guy singer joins the group and could possibly be the lead, hi Blaine, you treat him like complete and utter crap. Finn Hudson, your issues with, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the correct word, but you have issues, Finn. When you think someone's going to look better than you, you either shut down or you shut them down. Tisk tisk. Oh, what difference does it make? Everyone knows that my job here is so hard. I'll give you that sometime. Baby hormones are making me moody. That's good for Quinn, too. There are so many there. And Brittany. All the girls seem to have logical reasons why they're not singing. Finn's is being someone else was better than me. Well, okay, Santana's reason isn't great. But it's Santana. And Brittany's is she does, there's so many lyrics, I don't remember how what they are. A change Let her move. Brittany doesn't understand words. Words and Brittany don't go together that well. Like, they get mixed up in her head and she says them wrong. And other people don't understand her words and she's not totally sure about other people's words. But movement is where Brittany speaks and that is where she is the best. As I said, she can tell people who they are by how they move. Which is why she's confused when people suddenly move right. differently. This ends now. Which is why you're assigned for the week. Okay, seating arrangement. Brittany, Santana, Puck, Tina, Kurt, Mercedes. Okay, Finn, Artie, Rachel, Matt, Mike, Quinn. Matt and Mike sit next to each other a lot, so I'm guessing they're friends. Best friends. Best represents how you see yourself. Where you are in your lives right now. Your voice. Then, you're going to stand up here and sing your hearts out. All of you. Solos in front of everyone. Yay! Solos! The Sorry, Kurt. The Glee Club has lost its voice. The Glee Club has lost its voice. And in a couple seconds, who else loses their voice? Because Rachel is the Glee Club. Yeah, that metaphor wasn't hit hard enough over my head. It's time for us to get back. I'm going to kill Mrs. Simon. There's one thing that... Okay, so that's... I know, it's my voice. Puck at the piano. With Brittany sitting on the piano, and then Finn's kind of stiffly walking around in the background. And then we have Kurt and Mercedes in their cheerio. I'm exactly table. the same vocal range, a 16th century castrato, Orlando de Lasso. Orlando de Lasso. Who is that? A 16th century castrato. But he didn't have a song by Miss Whitney Houston in his back pocket. Mercedes is amused by Kurt. They're hi, Bert! Hi! I'm probably gonna say things to about you in this episode, but don't worry, you make up for it in the end, so I apologize in advance. I also apologize to Kurt in advance, because I'm probably gonna criticize him as well because babies. <laughs> hey Kurt. Yeah? What are you doing here? Is everything okay? He's so worried. He spends his entire high school education, the majority of it, worried that something will happen, either to him or his dad. No, I'm here to pick up Finn. We got a pair of tickets to the Reds game, and Carol said Finn's never been to a major league game. I mean, Cincinnati, so it's fairly major. Uh, what's it? It is with Phil. And why wasn't I invited? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Every time I sit down and watch a game, you start in on the fact that all the players were in stir. Finn closed his locker, went over, waved to someone in the league classroom. Is there some different excuse for stir pants? Okay, I'm ready. All right, I'll meet you by the car. This is going to be so great. It's going to be great for Finn. He's a lot to his mom, too. Hey, I'll see you home. I'll be home around midnight. Okay. Bert, darling, I love you usually. Let's talk about communication. How long have you had those tickets? 
I don't know. If you just got them today, okay. Um, then did you... Obviously, Finn knows what's going on, but Kurt just left the choir room, which he and Finn were both in. So did you call Carol earlier in the day and catch her before school and talk to Finn then? Or did you call Carol and then you called... Finn's cell phone and talked to him while he was at school, then Finn didn't tell Kurt, and were you, like, you just randomly saw Kurt in the hall, you didn't, like, tell him, call him and say, hey, meet me here, or anything, were you gonna leave with Finn and then call him? And then there's the fact, I'll see you at midnight. Now, I get that you're a single parent, and you own your own business, how often was Kurt left alone in the house or at the garage, for that matter? Kurt raised himself in some ways. Bert's a great father, but I'm thinking about it. I'll be home at midnight. You don't worry about your kid at all. So, I, it makes me think that he's left Kurt home alone a lot. Not bad. Not like, I'm going to go out drinking. No, not like that. Like, I'm working, or I got invited to do something with the guys, you okay, kid? Because he knows Kurt is self-sufficient. But communication is key with these two. With Bert and Kurt and Blaine, when communication cuts off or falls down, falls apart, everything else does too. Oh, baby, you look so upset. Girl, you got more curves than that Nissan has. Seriously? Yeah, so Alright guys, let's get things started. As I was first on the side of sheets, I'll kick things off. Okay. I have chosen Miley Cyrus's The Climb because it's about overcoming obstacles and beating the odds. In my case, the obstacle is you, my lackluster teammates who refuse to carry their own weight. Okay, sorry, quick seating arrangement. In the back row, we have Santana, Brittany, Space Base, Tina, then in front, Kurt, Mercedes, then in front, Artie, Quinn, Puck, Mike, Matt, Finn. And actually, I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming. Santana's like, wait, train wreck? She was doing her makeup then, and she's like, wait, train wreck? And it's like, I'm not sure what's going on there. Kurt's just wincing. Artie's like, oh god. Mike's. Uh, 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 she was like, uh, Brad? What are you saying? Brittany's enjoying it. Uh, I, why I've lost your lost her voice because she's the glee club and lost its voice. But Rachel, I think you're ha you're sick. Your tone is off. <laughs> she looked absolutely horrified. Hey, lady face. I noticed you were at Cheerios practice yesterday, and I don't look kindly on absenteeism. I'm so sorry, Miss Sylvester. You won't have Miss Sylvester. Does he randomly not call her coach? Again. Something happened yesterday. When he calls her, Kurt's very big on the naming of things. Kurt's very big on the naming of things. Sorry, Curdy, sweetie. Um, so he calls her Coach Sylvester sometimes, right? And then Miss Sylvester other times. Is that just in the first season, or is does he not call her Coach Sylvester at all in the first season? Hmm. But we're gonna continue the rest of this after the end of this video. Question. Let's see what question shall I ask you guys for this one. Okay. How do you think the whole Bert asking him to go to the baseball thing went? Like, and maybe the possibility that Kurt raised himself a lot because his dad was a single man owning a tire shop. So Kurt's very self-sufficient. So what do you think about the whole... Him asking Finn, I'm going to go back to the original. What do you think about Bert asking Finn to go to a game without ever discussing it with F Kurt? Not necessarily asking him to come along, but not discussing it until it's right about to happen. It's resolved later, but what do you think? Personal opinions. Go! And head on to part three!